This episode of the Military Matters Review is brought to you by Stars and Stripes. Go to stripes.com, enter promo code podcast, get 50% off your digital subscription. 50% off your subscription. Stripes.com, enter promo code podcast. Folks, the opinions expressed on the Military Matters Review are solely those of myself, Rod Rodriguez, and Desmond Ferris. That's me. They do not reflect or represent those of Stars and Stripes. So don't get us fired, okay? I need this job. Why is there male, female, this and that? Five battalions and... It used to be, go after her, bang some weights and... I dare you, challenge these dudes to, to a game of Street Fighter. So last Thursday, we had our um, third episode of our podcast. Where we talked about Military Fitness 2.0. And by that, we just explored all four branches and what everyone's doing in the space of military fitness, how everything is evolving. So we talked to the uh, the Army about their uh, ACFT, which is currently being fielded. We talked to the Marine Corps and what they're doing with athletic trainers and force plate technology. We talked to the Navy about NOFs and how they're rebranding their fitness programs and also addressed the article that named them the fattest branch in the uh, military. Uh, and we also talked to the Air Force about uh, the RAND, the uh, the RAND study that they're conducting and their two tier uh, PT system. So out of all of it, out of all that stuff. We got the most feedback about the Army's ACFT. Miss Megan Reed, that's why you're here to to answer these amazing questions from amazing soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines who actually had their own questions about uh, the Army's ACFT. So tell us a little bit about your experience at the ACFT. How do you fit into this picture? I am the public affairs officer for the ACFT. So it's my responsibility to communicate with soldiers how this test is going to impact their lives. I'm a veteran. I'm an Air Force veteran. So uh-huh. <laughs> it's really interesting to uh, to come onto this side of our, our service member house and see how the Army is doing things and, and really leading the way when it comes to changing the culture of physical fitness, uh, not just in the Army, but uh, across the services. So one of the really important things I wanted to talk to you about, and, and one of the reasons I was very glad that we were able to get you onto the MMR is because a lot of the questions that I've received about the ACFT have to do with the female side of the house in terms of how it, this particular test applies or maybe does not apply to females in the Army. So I'm going to open up with some questions from my own soldiers. I was at drill this last weekend. And they were very interested because the Army Reserve is currently fielding all the equipment and a lot of people, especially in the reserve side, are kind of nervous about what this means for them. So we're going to start with some of the female questions. And the first question I got was when the ACFT was designed, did they take the female physique, the female body into account? Because uh, exercises like the leg tuck and the deadlift, a lot of female soldiers feel that it is not taking their biological capabilities or or their their physiques into account. What are your thoughts on that? I think this is a, a, a two part a two part question, um, and the short answer to you is absolutely. We absolutely um, our scientists, our physical therapists, our physiologists, our nutritionists, everyone who contributed in the creation of this test over the past five years absolutely took into account every soldier physiological body type. And at the end of the day, we came to this test because each of these six events directly correlates to a battlefield movement, to something that you will or could do on the battlefield, where we want you to be able to be empowered to not only take care of yourself, but to stay safe and take care of your battle buddies. So we had to develop this test you know, we realized that while the old PT test was a really good gauge of your health, it was not a good gauge of your abilities to do your job. So things had to change. Now, I know it's a mouthful to say that we are changing the culture of fitness in the Army. That is such a big undertaking. And we understand that. We know that. But we also know 
that things need to change. And the ACFT is a part of a bigger system called holistic health and fitness. And holistic health and fitness looks at a soldier's sleep readiness, mental health readiness, physical readiness, occupational health, all of the above, nutrition. It's a really comprehensive system that we have to take to genuinely take care of soldiers. As of February 2018, only 59% of soldiers were deployable. That's an issue. That's a problem. We realize that. We recognize that. So how do we get ahead of this? How do we take care of you? How do we better take care of you? How do we make sure that you're okay on the battlefield, mentally, emotionally, physically, nutritionally? So the ACFT is just the beginning of a really big step towards holistic health and fitness. When it comes to the female standards, the APFT had two standards. It had male, female, and then, of course, it was distributed across the age groups. Females had their own standard, like they had a number they could reach, they hit 100, and that 100 on their PT score could be applied to a lot of different things, to promotions, to schools, to you name it. Now that we went to a gender neutral PT test, I believe 300 pounds or something in around that range is the max deadlift, and that's what you get your maximum score on. A lot of women are saying that's kind of unreasonable for women to be deadlifting 300 pounds. What about the, I guess, the, the, the inequality that could be seen in that? Like, I'm expected to lift 300 pounds, but I'm much smaller than my male counterpart. So that's another part of the mental shift I think we have to, we have to adapt to when it comes to looking at this test, right? Before the APFT push-ups, sit-ups, two-mile run, you knock it out, you beast it you've got your promotion points. This test is not about maxing it out. We have to change the way that we're looking at this test and change the way that we're attacking it. There's minimums set, and those minimums are based on your MOS and the physical demand categories of your MOS. So we have had women who have maxed out the deadlift. We have men who have maxed out the deadlift. Am I encouraging that? Absolutely not. I am encouraging you to use the PRT. I'm encouraging you to identify your strengths and your weaknesses and move forward pushing through. This test is not about maxing it out. I'm a woman. I weigh 175 pounds. I'm not going to deadlift 300 pounds, but I am, however, going to deadlift 160 at least. When you say that you're not going to max the, the, the 300 pounds and there is a change in the, in the culture of fitness within the army, how is the, how is leadership taking that into account when they start looking at numbers? Cause you know, I've been in the army for almost 20 years and metrics are a huge part of how we judge success and failure. So there's over 65 policies that are going to need to either be identified, adapted, or changed because of this test. Seven, 65 policies, that's a, that's a big number. And that's the whole purpose of this IOCU, right? So this year, Army uh, active duty soldiers will take two ACFTs for record, and then Reserve and National Guard soldiers will take one for record. That's so we can collect and aggregate more data. That's so we can look at the entire force and see how they're doing, what they're doing, and how these policies could potentially affect their careers. We're not in the business of completely changing your life. And I understand, we understand that there's a lot of fear and concerns about this test because before and, and with the current APFT, that was, that was a big part of, of, of your promotion was how does this affect you? How does this affect your life? Now with the ACFT, so the IOC year is um, the results are going to help commanders determine the readiness of their units, like how, how ready your unit is. You'll be able to um, drive changes within the PRT program to make sure that we're doing things the right way for soldiers, and then also determining the developmental needs for individual soldiers. So that means if you, if you just had a baby, if you're postpartum, if you've had surgery, kind of identifying those individual needs amongst those soldiers in your units. Why do we not just have gender neutral PT standards across the board DOD? Why, why is it, why is there male, female, this and that? Like, what, what's the importance of this? Why not just do it where, hey, it's either we pass or we fail. We pass together, we fail together. Why is that not important to do when we're always talking about we're Army strong, airmen, you know, we're one airman, you know, we're airmen first, you know, all these things. Why not just hit it like that so we're all hitting the same standards? 
you know, each service has not only its own mission, but its own culture. And so, you know, I think for there to be one uniform test across all services, you know, the Marine Corps is not the Army. They have unique strengths. They have unique missions that that we just don't do. Same for the Air Force. You know, a fighter pilot's abilities are not going to be able to be gauged against an Army logistics officer. So I think that because each service has its own defined mission and its own kind of defined culture, that it makes sense that we would each have our own individualized PT tests. One of the other concerns that we, we've we heard is it's around the equipment. So I understand that we're looking at almost $80 million of equipment from all sorts of different vendors. Uh, this is getting fielded to the Army this year, I believe, May. It's May. It's May of 2020. All, all, all units across all three components will have their equipment by May of 2020. The equipment deliveries have already started thanks to our partners at TACOM. They started around December of 2019 and all units will have their equipment by May of 2020. So the concern about the equipment really goes around, is there going to be enough equipment to go around? Will we be able to have enough equipment for the amount of people that are going to have to run through a PT an ACFT? And if we're all sharing pieces of it, will that affect our ability to prepare for the ACFT? So... Regular Army, National Guard, and Reserve senior leaders created this distribution plan. Um, So based on the needs of our soldiers in our individual units. Shipment for that equipment, like I said, is already in progress and is expected to continue and be completed by May of 2020. When it gets fielded, is there going to be enough for, for units to actually do their thing? I think that people were afraid, like, do we have to share all this equipment with Brigade, who has, like, five battalions and, you know... Oh, no, no, no. And and each individual, you know, like, we... Not, when I say we, I mean senior leaders, not me, decided on the 36,000 lanes of equipment to be distributed. That's a lot of equipment. And that's that's across CONUS and OCONUS. But one one point I'd really like to, to reiterate and hammer home is the reason that the PRT was created was to help soldiers train for the ACFT without the equipment. So you can train for this test if you go on to any platform, any app platform that you have, you can actually find the PRT app that was created by CIMT and you can download that and it has individualized plans. It has a calculator. It has individualized plans based on whether or not you're in a gym, whether or not you're at home, um, household items that you can use to to train for this test and to prepare. Uh, And each system is correlated to this test, to this specific test. And is there going to be enough? I know that that's a fear, but there will absolutely be enough equipment. Yes, absolutely. And then, you know, there's always the ability, since this is just the IOC year for us to assess that and either distribute more or for units to buy their own equipment. Is there any misconceptions that you want to address that we didn't get? Because I think we hit you with a lot of like, my people say this, what do you think? But is there anything you've heard that we didn't mention that you want to clear up? One of the best quotes that I've ever been given about holistic health and fitness from my doctors is that holistic health and fitness is not about fixing a broken soldier. It's about never breaking them. So that means dedicated training plans. That means dedicated nutrition plans, dedicated sleep plans, dedicating time to your mental and spiritual health. All of that is going to be incorporated within holistic health and fitness. And senior leaders still have to make decisions on all of these policies. And that's another big reason why we also created the alternate assessment. We realized that soldiers on permanent profiles need an alternative way to be able to be assessed on their physical fitness. And that's what the alternate assessment is about. I got to thank you for taking time out of your super busy schedule to uh, talk with us today about the ACFT, about PT in general. If you could get with Colonel Feltwell and and Mr. McGurk, thank them uh, on, on our behalf for all of their hard work and putting in this, this thing together. I'll be honest with you. I was very skeptical about the ACFT. I was, I'll admit it, I, I bad-mouthed it before I even knew what it was. But having had a chance to really sit down and talk with the experts and see it for myself and actually try the exercises, 
I'm really intrigued. I'm very fascinated with where we're going with this as the army. I think a lot of the branches are going to look at the, I feel like a lot of branches are, are, are watching us quietly to see how this thing works out. The army is leading the way in changing the culture of fitness across the services. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. This test is about soldier empowerment. This test is about helping you train, eat, prepare yourself mentally, spiritually, through sleep, helping you be the best version of yourself as a soldier, helping you be the best version of yourself as a leader and as a member of your community. What did you think about the episode when you heard it? Because now we got to listen to all the branches. Yeah, the the biggest thing I took from from the episode was how our military is evolving, mm -hmm. how we're learning to adapt, and how it's not a bro club like you used to say, like you used earlier. It used to be go out there, bang some weights, and bro science, bro science, and now it's more like how can we become effective soldiers, airmen, Marines, sailors, and be able to compete and not get hurt, not take ourselves out to battle. And that's the biggest thing I took from the episode. And the fact that the army is taking a, a big leap forward on it is good. I, because one of the things is it's hard, it's hard to make a change when you're one of the more, ironclad in what you do and you do it for a long time because army is very vast in traditions and that's why i asked the question about how are they preparing this because you know normally when it's when they when army does something it sticks for a while the question about military standard pt you know i'm an e6 i uh, i get paid as the other e6 well yes the thing here is Every branch has to be different. I don't think there should be a military-wide PT test. I don't think that makes sense. Everybody's mission is completely different. Whether you set the bar too high or too low, you're not doing it for that particular branch. And the branches themselves are smart enough to go, well, even the Air Force said the Air Force PT test is cool for like 90%, 99% of the Air Force, but... There are my special operators. They require a different PT test because there are standard for those guys is higher. So they created the tier two system where Air Force guys in those special branches, they have to take that PT test, which is uh, much harder than the other tests. And, and, and the fact you say that when I was speaking with the career force manager, the security forces, the primary combat role of the Air Force, one of their main is also going through those stages for their own test within the career field, which would be separate from the standardized Air Force test. So these adaptations for the jobs, I see are, are a key part of becoming a stronger force. So that was the episode. And you know what's really cool is the Army's going to apps. I think that's really good. The Army's embracing uh, apps for PT tests. And so can you, dear listener. Did you know that Stripes has an app? I didn't. Wait, did I? No, I didn't know. Yeah, 100%. Stripes has an app. So you can now read Stripes, your stars and stripes from your phone. It's downloadable on the Apple Store, the Google Store, whatever you've got in the palm of your hand. You can take stripes wherever you go. In addition to Military Matters, Military Matters Review, Force for Hire, you name it. The Stripes podcasts are now available on the app, wherever you listen, wherever you read. Go to stripes.com. Folks, save yourself 50%. Use our promo code podcast 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 i'm gonna leave this to desmond to add a special effect in there right go yes. podcast podcast and all podcast. that good stuff yes folks <laughs> next thursday desmond oh, what are we man. doing next thursday bud so i like this one because we're going from hey we're getting strong we're getting fit to we're playing video games <laughs>
What do I mean by playing video games? Yes, we're talking about military gamers. Military so, gamers. Is military that an MOS? Is that, MO is that a new job? Is that a thing we're doing now? I think so, but you'll have to tune in next Ooh. week to find out how you possibly can too play video games for the DOD. I'll give you a hint. Uh, you don't want to play Street Fighter against some of these dudes. You don't want oh. to do it. You get your heart broke. It was, it's like that Dave Chappelle <laughs> skit. It's like that Dave Chappelle. You see him challenge him. I dare you challenge these dudes to, to game of Street Fighter. Game. Blouse. Game. <laughs> Blouses, 100%. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, as always, I'm Rod Rodriguez. And I'm Desmond Ferris. And this was your Military Matters Review. We'll see you at the next episode. <laughs>